Hey, Service Nation, so good to be with you today. Today, we're gonna to talk about how to stop paying people to hold your business hostage. If you're like me and you, well, we're gonna dive into all that stuff, but I'm so excited to be with you today. Again, uh, for those of you uh, joining us live or watching the video, joining from my kitchen, we've got our big fancy office with the backdrop and everything. I think I might dig this better, so we'll have to let you guys tell us what you like, the, the more official office or just kind of me hanging out. I feel like I, uh, it's more conversational when I'm here and you guys get better stuff. Um, all right. That said, again, we are just starting this. So if you are digging the content that you're getting, there's a couple of things that you can do to help us know that this is valuable. We'll, we'll, I'll keep putting my time and my team's resources on it. Subscribe, rate, and review to the podcast. If you go to growmyservicecompany.com, there are three links. Uh, you can put in your, your name to get information when our book comes out and all the good stuff that we've got coming. Um, you can join our Facebook group. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel, subscribe to our podcast. Uh, we just launched a podcast this week, so uh, subscribe, rate, review, and refer is going to help us really launch that bad boy. Um, and if you do want to participate, I'll tell you at the end of the uh, the broadcast how to get a copy of my book, I'm a Freaking Genius, Why Is This Business So Hard for Free? But let's jump into this whole concept of paying people to hold your business hostage. Um, what I'm specifically talking about is marketers, right? Like Google AdWords, the SEO people, the website guy, just everyone that comes to you and says, give me money and I'll grow your business. Not that they're all bad or anything, but um, I just for 20 years kind of wanted that to be taken care of. And, and we finally figured out how to make it so we can scale all we want. I want to share that with you guys. So if you're like me, I started out in this business with really just no idea how to get customers. And I hate to say it, but it's just the truth. Um, I did a bunch of work and after doing a lot of work, customers would kind of just trickle in one by one, but I didn't really have an idea of how it, what worked or what didn't work or how to do it again, right? So I'd work, 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 work and, and get some customers, but I didn't really have a clear if I do the levers, right? If I pull this lever, this amount of, or spend this money or do anything that I could do that's scalable, repeatable, dependable, so I could do it over and over again, right? I just knew if I worked a bunch, some customers would come in, but I had to work so hard. Once I finally got customers, I had to go take care of hiring employees and servicing those customers. It was never consistent, so I never could grow the way that I wanted to grow. Um, I knew I needed to be able to get customers, right? I, I always wanted to be a million-dollar co company and then a $10 million company, and I knew that if I wasn't able to get customers in a scalable, repeatable way, that was never going to happen, right? And I knew I could do the work, right? I spent all this time on management and leadership and team building and finance and kind of all the stuff I, I needed. But because I was just kind of like, if I could, if I could just get smart enough enough things, I can maybe skip and not know how, have to know how to get this, uh, not have to know how to to get customers, which is not the case. So I desperately wanted to be a big successful businessman in my eyes, in my family's eyes, in my friend's eyes, just in the world's eyes. And I knew that I had to figure out this marketing thing. I kept trying to avoid it and um, it just kept coming back, right? So, I mean, I don't know about you guys. <laughs> Feel free to raise your hand with me or, or uh, you know, kind of metaphorically. If you paid, you know, money mailers, did radio ads, paid the SEO guy, paid to have websites. Um, you know, I was back in the day when websites didn't exist. And you'd spend five, ten grand on a website. It was a big deal. PR, like just all the money, you know, all the different stuff that we use to telemarketers to build our company and the problem was if it just flat out didn't work at all, fine. Or if it worked like gangbusters, fine. But if you're like me, it was so frustrating because you never really knew what was going to happen. You kind of got some results, but not really the results you hope for. But when you really want to grow, you can't just be like, well, I guess I'll just wait, right? So it, it kind of created me the sneaking suspicion that nothing really worked. And at the end of the day, it just came down to me being in the right time at the right place and having a little luck, right? It's just, I didn't know how to kind of do it on purpose, which is so frustrating because if you're really going to grow a, a, a multi-million dollar company, you've got to be able to get customers on purpose over and over for a price that's affordable and all that stuff, right? So, you know, I, I don't know about you guys, but I would get sold by all this, uh, you know, marketing, right? Like give me money. I'm a Facebook guy. You know, let me run your Facebook ads and I'll make you rich. Or the Google AdWords guy, he'll make you rich. Or the direct mail guy. There's always a guy, right? And they always want to sell you their crap or their good stuff. You know, I'm not saying they're all bad, but they never quite seem to make me rich <laughs> or make my company grow the way that I wanted. Um, but the big problem was I kept trying to abdicate 
that part of my business to somebody else, right? Like if I just give this guy money and like, you know, fax over a thousand dollar check and he'll send me 10 customers, life would be great. And they all kind of sold that, but it never really happened. Um, because I found there's two kinds, right? There was the kinds that were super affordable, like, oh, 500 bucks a month or something. I was like, oh, that's reasonable. But they never got anything done. Or the people that I thought could get stuff done, but they were super expensive, right? Because they actually knew how to get clients. So it just drew me nuts because I knew if I could fix this one thing, I could have all the growth that I wanted. But I kept spending money on things that either didn't work at all or worked a little bit. Never did I really hit a home run. And the people that could do it, because I... It's weird. Like at first I was like, this can't be done. It's impossible. But then I recognized there are people that actually know how to get clients. I figured they were like wizards, right? They're just magical people that had a skill that I didn't have and I couldn't get it. And certainly they couldn't do it in my market, right? That was always the excuse. And you can feel free to give me a shout out if you feel that same way. Like, well, that won't work in my market, right? And it just drove me up a wall to keep banging my head against the same problem. Um, looking back as usual, the thing that was really keeping me from my success were my beliefs, believe it or not. I believed that it was luck. Um, or magic, right? Or it just, it couldn't be done in my area. And if I had to really be perfectly honest, I think my secret belief was that I couldn't do it, right? Like I could never, those people really were like wizards to me. And you feel free to, to give me some feedback in terms of if you feel like, yeah, that's how I feel or not. I, I always, you know, owning a business can be really lonely. So it's nice to kind of have a community. Uh, and again, if you go to growmyservicecompany.com, you can join the Facebook group and we can all chat there as well. Um, so, the big thing that was holding me back was beliefs. It couldn't be done. Um, they're wizards. They have these skills that are ungettable, and it certainly can't be done in my area, in my business. And that's why I like to grow my service company um, community because there is no one that can say it can't be done in mine, right? Because we're going to do it over and over and over again. And for plumbers, HVAC, landscapers, pool guys, cleaners, all you guys that go somewhere and provide a service, um, we're going to take away. They can't be done in my industry, right? Um, but again, I think the big was beliefs I couldn't do it, right? So I was almost happy to pay people and a lot of that money was wasted just for the belief that maybe they'll be my magic wand, right? But the problem is if they were my magic wand, I never found one guy or company that made it work, but if they did, he really is the owner of my company, right? If, if he should raise his prices or leaves, my whole company sucks. So I had to understand that this is something I had to figure out on my own and I couldn't just abdicate it to I'll just pay somebody and hopefully it'll magically get better, right? Um... The crazy thing is it cost me millions of dollars. I don't think I realized at the time, but looking back, the revenue that we could have made once I just got this one secret unlocked, um, the profit we made, both when I'm running my business, when I sold my business, holy crap, I could have sold them for millions more if I would have had this locked down. Well, we had a good job, but it, was, it wasn't perfect, right? It wasn't dependable, repeatable, scalable. It was like kind of here's the things that we do and they kind of work, but none of them work like gangbusters where we could just have an infinite amount of money, right? Like we put in a dollar, we get $2 back. Nothing was like that. So I spent decades trying to provide better service, learn to be a better leader, get smarter finances, all the things that are important and good, but I didn't learn this one thing. And the reality was that I came up to, and maybe you're here, right? And if you're not, now's the time. Don't be a knucklehead like me and wait 10, 20 years to, to kind of ignore this reality. Let's get face to face with the reality that if you don't have a repeatable, dependable, scalable system to get more qualified leads, then you need to hit your growth goals you're never going to hit them, right? So that's, that we've, that's a, a little treasure chest we've got to unlock. It's non-negotiable. If you want to just grow a couple percent a month, like I guess you don't really need a system for that. But if you really want to grow double, triple, quadruple your business over the next couple of years and build something big, you are going to have to solve the lead generation problem. It's going to have to be scalable, repeatable, dependable, not just I can kind of do it sometimes with some things that work sometimes and I don't know if they're profitable. Not like that. Uh, I, if I want to grow, I put this much money in, I get that much money out and I am able to get more leads coming in than I need to hit my goals. That's really the key, right? So if you can dependably get more leads than you need to hit your goals, you're good to go. If you can't stick with me. All right. So I kind of was slowly, slowly learning this with my brick and mortar businesses. When I sold my last brick and mortar business and started to help other people grow, um, I was like, you know, I got to finally figure out this, uh, on the thing at the time it was like online marketing, digital marketing, right? That was the thing it was a while back, but, um, that was kind of like the magic. I'm like, you know what? I sold my businesses. I got some money. I don't need to work. I'm going to figure this damn thing out. And I invested in a lot. <laughs> I, I, I know I've got a quarter million bucks in my education and I didn't, I didn't go to, I didn't go to college. So invested in a lot of, uh, amazing mentors. Some were great and some were not so great. Um, but the big shift that I want to share with you today, and I, I think I have to probably give credit to Russell Brunson on this one. Uh, I put a picture, I think I, I sent Lindsay a picture of me and, uh, me and Russell, I think it was in Boise, um, one of his events we were hanging out. 
um, put up there. So anyway, he helped me move, and this is this is what I want you to get from this whole time here. He helped me move from media based advertising, right? I kind of wanted to be sold on Facebook's the magic thing. That's the if you just put put money into Facebook ads, you'll be rich forever, or Google AdWords, or the yellow pages, or direct mail, or you know, trying to pick all sorts of old and new stuff. Right. He helped me move from that media base of I just find the magic media. And that's probably one of the most a- questions I get asked most often is where should I put my money? Where should I put what what media? Is it Facebook? Is it this? Because we're sold that it's this, that or the other. Um, but that's good for the salespeople, but not great for us, right? He helped me understand and move from the keys of the kingdom being some sort of secret media that if I just discovered, I'd be great to creating a funnel for my people to go through. And, um, you know, Russell Brunson owns ClickFunnels. It's an online tool that we use and we love, but it's not magical, right? And Russell will tell you this. It's not like if you just sign up for, for ClickFunnels, you'll be rich. Um, or even that it has to be an online funnel. So here's the thing. People get a little wonky, especially in the service business when they hear funnels. They think it's got to be some, they got to be technically savvy. It's got to be this fancy thing. That's not the case. There are online funnels and there are offline funnels. The, the big difference was you have to go from just putting an ad out and hoping people call right then to creating a path for your people to follow, right? So they raise their hand. They get to know, like, and trust you. Um, you we'll talk about how that works. But um, this will get you out of the headache of, I'm just going to put an ad out and tell people to call me. And if they call, then it was a successful ad. If they don't, then it wasn't right. Which is just so superficial, right? We need to understand that. Um, first of all, even when I did that, I wouldn't track who called, what their lifetime value was, how much they bought. Like I didn't even have the, the tracking that was sophisticated enough. So I ended up with this gut feeling like, I think I got some customers, but I don't really think they were worth as much or more than I put in the advertising and the time and all that. So you, I never really kind of kept going because I didn't, I wasn't sure I was even making money on it. Right. So tracking is a big thing. Um, but we, the big shift that we need to move from is just putting out an ad going, Hey, want to buy my crap? Um, and then hoping they do right now, I guess if you're selling a t-shirt or something cheap and transactional, maybe that works. I don't know. I've never done, had a business like that where I made it work, but I'm guessing someone somewhere has, but when it's a service business, right, when you're really trying to build a relationship, it'd be like, Hey, I'm going to come to your home and do pest control every month or, um, come to your business and, 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 uh, you know, fix your HVAC. Um, we need a little bit more of a relationship than that. Right. So we got to move from just putting in an ad and hoping someone calls, which is what we want. Right. So the problem is all these bad decisions we're making are not because we're dumb. It's because we we're doing what we wish would work, whether it works or not. Right. So first we wish we could just give some marketing agency genius guru a bunch of money and that would solve our problems forever right but that's when you think about it even for 10 seconds it's like well then how much are they going to charge you and if they knew how to get all the clients in the world won't they have other clients and what if they quit using you or what if they start raising price you know it just it doesn't make sense right so then we move to well um I'll put out advertising, but I just want to spend a thousand dollars in advertising and have ten thousand dollars of customers just come in right there, right? Well, I'd like that too. That'd be awesome, but that just it doesn't work, right? That's there's that's not it doesn't work. What we really need to do is move to a funnel where we give value and then give more value and then give more value, and we do it in a way that's automated and scalable, right? Like right now, I'm giving value to the world. Not, there's not that many people on live, but there'll be thousands of people to hear this, right? And so, you know, right now with our our other company, we we put out over 500 pieces of content um, and they've had millions and millions of views, right? So I, I do, we do the work once and then we get paid ongoing. So that's what we need to start setting up with you guys as a funnel where you do the work once and you get paid forever as opposed to I put money in this ad and I asked people to buy and they did or they didn't, right? And if you're like me, you put out the ad that asked for the sale and it's crickets, right? Nobody calls back, right? They don't, they just, it just doesn't work. So um, let's talk about the framework of how to move from not knowing what your clients are worth or if they're even profitable when they buy something. And if they don't buy right away, it was an unsuccessful campaign to a scalable, repeatable, dependable system to attract the clients that you need. So first of all, we've got to change our thinking. Um, First, we got to stop thinking of clients as luck of the draw, right? As some sort of like, well, I, I hustled, I did a bunch of cold calls. I, knocked on some doors, I, you know, I did, I left some flyers, things that are just kind of not scalable and repeatable. Um, start thinking about it as a systematized process that we can scale. That's the first thing. So stop thinking about clients as this luck of the draw, or I do this, I do that. And it just, it all kind of works out to a systematized process that we put X amount of dollars and time in, we get Y amount of customers out and we can turn that, we've got three or four of those dials or lovers that we can pull or, or turn up and down Two, we've got to stop thinking if they don't buy now, my marketing failed. 
got to stop that, right? And again, this doesn't have to be like a 10 year sales cycle, right? Sometimes it's like content marketers. I love content marketing. This is content marketing right now. What we're doing uh, like, oh, you got to put out content. And you're not going to get paid for a year. Like we're not going to go that way either. But the fact that this particular podcast that I do, if nobody buys something right now, we don't have anything for sale. So <laughs> no one is going to buy anything, but we're trying to get value. That's okay, right? The goal at the beginning is to build an audience and to build some value with them and have them know, like, and trust you. And then we make an offer, right? So stop thinking if they don't buy today, marketing fail. Doesn't mean it's going to take months or certainly not years, but it doesn't have to be one ad one time. And we're going to do this by tracking our marketing. So we know exactly how much time and money we spend on each marketing channel. And we're going to, um, track what kind of a revenue we get. We're going to talk about that in a second. And the last mindset thing is we're going to stop this whole thing of I'm going to out, there's some magic thing out there that's going to get me rich and start putting it in here. I am going to create a system within my company that attracts all the clients or all the leads that I need to hit my goals, right? So we're going to stop wishing on a star <laughs> that some magic media will come and solve all our problems. Or if we just put an ad that says buy my crap, uh, more people, enough people will buy our crap uh, or our services to, to make it work. So here's the system that we're going to use. First and foremost, you've got to understand your client's lifetime value. That is the magic lever in the service business, right? For most of us, you know, we talk about landscaping, cleaning, pool cleaning, pest control, things like that. It's a um, uh, ongoing relationship, right? So <clears throat> You know, our, our first service business was that we, we coach owners and cleaning companies, right? That might be on the residential side, two, three hundred bucks a month. On the commercial, it might be two, three grand, right? Depending on the size of the thing. But you can sign up one client and that client might stay with you two or three years. We, we've had clients that have been with uh, our clients for 20 years, right? Literally million dollar relationships. Same with the, even with HVAC, right? If you've got one commercial client, they can be worth a lot. So you've got to understand what the lifetime value is. <clears throat> because it's okay if, say, it costs us two or three hundred bucks to get a client. And that client's worth two or three hundred bucks a month. We're not gonna make any money month one, but the lifetime value is high enough. So we gotta understand our lifetime value. That's a superpower in uh, the service business. And we'll talk about that a lot in upcoming episodes. If you are not a recurring client, if your lifetime value is low, like, oh, HVAC, my average ticket, you know, is 396 bucks for, uh, for a service call. Uh, and we just do one and that's it. We are gonna help you transform that to a relationship where you're out. Uh, two, three times a year, right? So we've got to, A, understand the lifetime value. B, if our business isn't obviously, like for landscaping and, uh, you know, pool cleaning, things like that, it's, you know, it, it sets up pretty well for recurring business. If we're not like that, right, we're an electrician or a plumber, we're going to start modifying our business so we do have higher lifetime value, really important. Once we understand um, client's lifetime value, we're going to move from chasing to attracting. Right. Chasing is buy, buy my crap, buy my crap. Here's an offer. 20 bucks off, 20 percent off, discount, discount, discount. Um, that's chasing. We're going to move from that to attracting. Um, we're going to stop asking for the sale and we're going to start asking how we can bring value to their life and making offers that are too good to be true. And again, for those of you guys, like, what does that look like? This right here is what it looks like. Right. There's we're not selling anything on this podcast. I'm trying to give massive amounts of value. We've transformed thousands of owners of, of service businesses. We want to help transform your lives before I ask for a nickel. We want to give a lot of value. And then after a lot of value, once we've given enough value, some of you guys are going to come to me and go, holy crap, Mike, will you help me personally? Is there a way I can get more value faster? And at that point, we would make an offer, right? We don't have that right now, but we will, I promise. Um, so we're going to stop asking for the sale and start making offers that are just too good to be true. And I'm going to give you an example of that offer and make you an offer right now. It's too good to be true. Uh, and then we're going to continue bringing value once you've got that that list of people, right? And our other uh, business that, that caters just to owners of a cleaning company, I think we've got 35,000 people on our list. Um, that have opted in and are interested, right? So I continue to make them offers to bring value to their life, right? Um, and I'll tell you, when you're like, oh, that sounds like a lot of work because so many people push back, like, I just want to put out an ad and have people buy. Me too. That's exactly what I want, but it doesn't work, right? So um, even for those of you guys, that sounds like a lot of work. I don't know. Will it work? I promise you, having started a business and, you know, we've got, you know, I don't know, 15,000 subscribers on YouTube and a 10,000 person Facebook group and all these kind of assets of people that know, like, and trust us. Super easy to, to make money over there, right? We, we, it's a seven figure business and we have more customers coming to us than we want right here. We're just starting with nothing. Like, holy crap, that no like, and trust is so, is so important. So we are doing here with the Grow My Service uh, Company exactly what we teach you guys how to do, right? We're going to give a ton of value. 
Um, we're going to make offers that are too good to be true. We're just going to bring so much value to the community. And I know that within months we'll have revenue coming in. It'll be fantastic. So you'll get to, those of you that are here now, you get to follow and watch the journey of us going from zero to some money to, you know, seven figure business. I have no doubt we'll do it in far under a year. And I'll, I'll take you along the journey with us so you can see exactly us practicing what we preach and how that looks. So, um, we are going to be the, the human guinea pig and show you what this thing looks. So, um, and by the way, if you guys and gals out there are like, yeah, I love this. Here's what I want. Reach out. Mike at GrowMyServiceCompany.com. As long as I can personally answer that email, I shall personally answer that email. Let me know what you want. So, um, the good news is all these systems and processes I'm teaching you, I've built, I built several multi-million dollar companies with them. Uh, several seven figure exits and we're going to, these work, right? So we're going to take away the mystery and I'm not a wizard. I can guarantee them to you that if you, if you don't, if you think I am, ask my wife, she'll tell you. Um, okay. So here's how this all turns out. We're going to go, not only did I fix my number one roadblock to growth, which is being able to get customers like on demand, so to speak. Um, I transformed my entire business, right? I could fire bad customers or even better, not even take them in. We are very selective about who we work with. We almost never get customers that we don't like. And if we do, we can just be like, we're going to part friends right here, right? Because we know how to get customers, so we don't put up with nonsense. You can have the same thing too, right? When you can't get enough customers, you tend to put up with yahoos that aren't who you should be wasting your time on. But because you need their money, you take it. So this, there's, you'll start saying no to bigger and better opportunities, which is super exciting. And the best part is it finally gave me the confidence that I could grow as fast as I want. And now I know I can build a business um, the way I like that suits my lifestyle and hits my goals and I can serve as many people as I want to serve. That was the other thing. We have so, I have so much, I feel like I was put on this earth to give and to serve. And you know, if I'm only serving nine people, that's not really fulfilling my, my, um, purpose, right? And I, I, if, you, if you're listening to this, if you're this committed to your, your service company, I promise you're put on this earth to serve and to do something bigger, your community, your employees, your, your customers. And just that one lack of knowing how to attract customers, we can't let that stand in the way of that. So, um, let me show you what it looks like with the too good to be true offer. How do you give value, um, that is that people want to get on board with? Let me show you. So, uh, I, uh, I wrote a book a couple years back. I'm a freaking genius. Why is this business so hard? It's a fantastic book. Uh, I spent 20 years of buying, building and selling, you know, several multi-million dollar businesses. I did a lot of stuff right and a lot of stuff wrong. And I distill it all into a book. You can get it on Amazon for 20 bucks right now, um, which would be a fine offer. I think it's worth way more than 20 bucks, but I want to make it even better. I want you guys to be like, holy crap, this guy's amazing. So uh, I want to give it to you for free. Like I said, we are really trying to build this podcast and um, this community, and we just want to make sure that you guys are out there and, and you're, you need as much help and want as much help as they do over in at Grow My Cleaning Company. So if you are supportive, subscribe, rate, and review, and refer, right? If you know other people that are trying to grow their service company and need this kind of help, um, just subscribe, rate, review, and refer. Send me a direct message on Instagram or Instagram, just Instagram.com forward slash grow my service company. That's it. Instagram.com forward slash growing service company. Just subscribe, rate, and review to this podcast. Uh, and again, you go to growmyservicecompany.com and get the, uh, the link to the podcast and all that stuff. So subscribe, rate, and review. Um, and then send me a direct message on Instagram that just says subscribed. And I will send you a copy of my book for free. Um, so that's it. It'll take you, I don't know how long it take you to subscribe, rate, and review four minutes, two minutes. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm not that good at technology. So it might take me five minutes. Uh, I'll get you a free copy of my book and, um, email me back, Mike, at service company.com. Let me know how you like the book. Let me know the value that, that you gave. And more important, let me know the value that we can give going forward so we can build this community around you and what you need and what's important to you. So super excited to serve and get to know you guys and gals. Uh, so excited. We are doing, I don't know how long it's going to last, but at least for the first month while we launch, we're doing these podcasts every business day, Monday through Friday. So if you're digging it and, uh, whether you listen to the podcast or the video, if you want to join me live, it's, uh, just join our Facebook group so you can get grow my service company, Facebook group, so you can get, um, notifications, but we will be here every Monday through Friday, 9am Pacific and can't wait to meet y'all. Talk soon.